Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech. I recently uploaded a video on using Microsoft Teams for live online lessons and it generated a lot of interest and also a lot of interesting questions from viewers. I thought it was well worth pulling some of those questions together and going through them one by one as I'm sure that many of you have similar questions bouncing around your brain. So this video is using Microsoft Teams for online lessons Q&A. If you have questions, keep watching, the answers are coming. At the end of the video, I'll also be sharing some up and coming updates to Microsoft Teams, uh, some very interesting new tools coming along. So if you're interested in those, make sure you stay until the end to hear about them. Okay, let's get cracking. So first question, lots of you are asking if you could have the resources from the demo lesson I showed, the PowerPoint and the, and the Microsoft Forms that I used as a survey. Uh, of course you can, share it as caring. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below this video and you'll also find a link below the original video. Uh, so that one's done. VK989 asks, do you have an option to not have the camera on as a student? Is it mandatory to have it on? And RahulMG23 asks, can we as teachers have options to turn the video off for our audience? Uh, yes. For you shy types, it is totally fine. Uh, everyone has control over their own camera. Uh, you can't force anybody to turn their camera on and you're in charge of turning your own camera on and off. So if you don't want to show yourself, you can turn your camera off. If you do want to show yourself, you can turn your camera on. Uh, I, I find that a lot of students are quite shy about turning their cameras on. Um, I do think that presenting online is you know, it's a, it's a new skill, isn't it, that students are going to have to have, certainly over the next six months. So if you can gently encourage and persuade them to turn on their camera just for a little bit each session, perhaps, I think that's a good idea. So not mandatory, not obligatory, but uh, desirable, and, and I think that people should be encouraged to do it. Talkative Onion asks, it is possible to join the class with a mobile, right? Uh, yeah, right. You can join with any device. It, uh, Microsoft Teams, there are clients that run on uh, iPads, iPhones, Android phones and tablets, or Mac, Mac devices and also PCs. So whatever electronic device you have at home, uh, as long as it's smart, it can probably run. It. There is a There are a few differences in the feature set available on each device. Uh, I think the best feature set is on PCs. You get uh, interesting things like uh, instant captions and stuff like that that you don't get on any of the other platforms, but you can participate with any device. Yolani Bakwadano asks, how many people are allowed to be in a video conference? And Mohamed uh, Giatz Ristiana asks something similar. How many students can join the live session? Now, I believe the maximum number is 250, which is loads. If you've got a class bigger than that, I don't know what you're teaching. Uh, I, I found all this information in this useful document online. I will link to it below. So you, it's got all the data about how many, how many people you can have a group and how many groups you can have an intensity. All sorts of interesting numerical facts. Alison Nidiorciadi, I'm probably pronouncing that terribly, uh, asks, uh, how how do we get the screen to record? I would like to record my lesson in case some students can't make them. Uh, really easy, once you start the lesson, you just click on the three epsilons on the toolbar and then tap on start recording. Everything else after there is done automatically. Uh, the video will be captured, uploaded to stream and you'll get a handy link plonked into your group uh, post uh, that links straight to the video. Uh, Tim Sprawl asks, uh, the legal ramifications of video conferencing in minors bedrooms could be a bit of an issue. Uh, yeah, interesting question. I do think that's why you probably do want to turn the recording session on. If you recorded your session, then you've got um, some very clear evidence of what happened during the session. Uh, so I do recommend that you do turn that on just uh, as a safeguarding thing. Just the same way as if you're in a classroom, you would you know, you maybe leave the door open if you were alone with one student. Leon K. Heng Neo asks, can a teacher just chat with one student in the team without other members to see, listen to the conversation? Uh, you can't have like little mini conversations within the meeting that are private. You could create a meeting with just two people in it, uh, but you know, just 
referring back to the comments I made a moment ago about safe caring, uh, I, I'm not sure it's a great idea to be in a one-to-one -one chat uh, with students, but uh, again, if you've got the record uh, record feature turned on, that will give you some sort of safeguard, I think. Elaine Arvidsson asks, how do you add a survey to Teams? Uh, I demonstrated this in the demo lesson in the original video. Uh, you could just create a survey for yourself in Microsoft Forms before the meeting. Uh, take a copy of the share link and paste that into the, the meeting chat. Uh, students would then be able to get onto that chat, find the link and, and link to the survey. That can be all done within the, within the meeting without, without um, interrupting uh, their participation. Jude Actor wants to know if it's possible to have the chat box open while sharing PowerPoint files with students on Microsoft Teams. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, you can open up your conversation sidebar uh, at any point in the, in the meeting. You just tap on the screen uh, so it pulls the tool palette up uh, and then click on the, the conversation button. That will open up the side panel for you. Your side panel does not show up in your students view though. Uh, they'll just see your, um, your feed. Uh, if, you want, if they want to see what's in the chat box, they will have to open up their own chat box to have a look. Okay, so you open up your conversation sidebar will not show it to other students they will have to open up their own conversation sidebar to see what's going on there. I hope that's clear. Kiona Reberg asks how she can see which students are online. Uh, you can do that, this very easily. All you need to do is to tap on the screen to pull up your toolbar, tap on the participants um, icon, which will pull out your participant sidebar. Everyone in the meeting will be listed under there. You'll see who's been, uh, who's attending and who's invited but not attending. Uh, you'll get a full list. Chris Fisher would like to know uh, if there's a mute audience button like there is in Zoom. Uh, no, there's not, a, well, I haven't found one anyway. I haven't found a mute all button. Uh, you can pull out the uh, participant side panel like I was just describing earlier and you can go to each student and mute individual students, but I don't think there is a mute all button, unfortunately. Perhaps it's something that Microsoft will add at a later date. Um, then S. Memi asks, can you mute pupils, which you've asked about, or block them from commenting? Uh, you can block students from commenting, but the, the chat uh, box that pops out is your conversation thread from your team. So in order to block them from, uh, from that, you will need to go into your team management and mute them there. It's quite easy to do, you just pull up the list and then tick in a little box and that's them silenced. Uh, I oft, I've used that before if students are misusing the team thread and writing things in there that they shouldn't, they get barred for a day or two. Skywatcher asks, can you see the student screens instead of them or their alias? And John Powell asks, would it be possible in an online lesson to have one of the students do a presentation uh, to the rest of the group? So these are very similar questions. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, what you need to do first, though, is go to the participant side panel, like I've shown in the last two questions, find the students that you want to be able to present, uh, tap on the three epsilons at the end of their name, and then you need to make them a presenter. Uh, if you've made them a presenter, then they're able to share their screen just as you are. Um, so that kind of gives them a kind of elevated uh, permissions in the in the meeting. So easy to do. You can actually do it beforehand as well. If you've if you've invited uh, students to the to the lesson uh, and they've accepted it and appear in the in the invite of the of the meeting itself, you can go through that before the actual meeting and upgrade the people you want to be able to present. I uh, hope that answers that question for you. Ismail Sarani would like to know if it's possible to zoom on the teacher to have him in most of the screen. Uh, yes, it is. Again, you need to go to the participant side panel, find the student or the person you want to have uh, pulled, stretched over the whole screen, uh, click on the three epsilons after their name and pin them. Uh, once they're pinned, they'll then appear across the whole page. This is particularly useful if instead of showing your face uh, using your front facing camera, you hook up a visualizer to your, uh, to your uh, home setup 
That way you can uh, put something under your visualizer and blow it up to full screen so students can see it easily. So that's a good technique to use if you are sharing something via a visualizer. If you want to know more about sharing via a visualizer, I made a video just about that. So you can click on the link above and that will tell you more about that. Blue Igiato asks, does Microsoft Teams have something that can be used similar to a real life whiteboard? Not like the one Microsoft give, I mean one where you can type on it and put some example pictures in. Uh, and 3DFX says, does it have a whiteboard for me to draw molecules? I use Auto, uh, Autodesk Sketchbook to draw organic molecules for my students to see. Now there is a whiteboard tool built into Teams. It was originally its own app called Microsoft Whiteboard. Uh, it's, it's okay, it's got some basic pens and um, highlighters that you can use and you can actually uh, work interactively on it so uh, people in the other people in the meeting can get on it as well. Uh, but it's not the best um, whiteboard software, it's quite limited. Um, 3DFX says they use Autodesk Sketchbook, which, which is fine, you can, you can put anything you like underneath Teams. And if you then share to your desktop, whatever other software you've got running, you can use as your, um, as your white, white bo uh, whiteboard. Personally, I like to use OneNote. Um, and the reason for that, well, there's a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's got a great set of uh, pens uh, that you can use. Who doesn't love rainbow pen? I mean, it's great, isn't it? And, um, and it's got a ruler on there as well. And uh, you can stick all sorts of things in there. You can put a video in, you can put a picture in, uh, all sorts of um, things you can attach to, to OneNote. So I tend, that's, that's my go-to whiteboard. And the other reason I use it is because I have my OneNote set up as a, a class notebook. So whatever I do write in the page is automatically shared with all the students. So uh, I don't have to then separately share the pictures with them. They get them automatically. So I highly recommend OneNote. I use it as my whiteboard in all of my classes uh, when I'm projecting on the, on the board at the front. And I also use it when I'm working with Teams. Finally, insert username here says, I hope my teachers do not find this. Well, sorry, insert name username here. I'm gonna have to, uh, tell you that quite a few of your teachers probably found it. It's been quite a popular video. Lots of you have watched already. I think it's close to 100,000 views now uh, and climbing. So uh, yeah, sorry, insert no username here. Uh, meetings are coming to a virtual classroom near you. Now I promised I'd wrap up with some news about some exciting updates coming to Microsoft Teams. Uh, there are three, actually, which I think are going to be quite interesting for Teams meetings. Uh, the first one, Blur Background, is coming to iOS. You know, you saw me in the, in the video on hosting online lessons that I was blurring out my background on my PC. Uh, that is a PC only at the moment, but it's coming to iOS really soon. Um, so the same feature will be available on mobile devices, which is really exciting. Next up, Real-Time Noise Suppression. Uh, what Microsoft has already done in terms of blurring out the background uh, of the image, they're now bringing to sound. Uh, Real-time noise suppression uses AI to kind of suppress any kind of annoying background si uh, sounds so like crashing and clashing and people eating crisps and all those sort of things. Uh, it has the ability to squash those sounds down so you don't, don't hear them in the in the in the meeting finally the most exciting one i thought was raise the new raise hands feature uh, a little thing but um it's another way for students to grab your attention and uh just to indicate that they want to ask a question rather than writing a message to you in chat or coming onto the microphone to speak to you a student just can just press a key and that will display a little yellow hands up feature underneath their icon or their picture and then you as a teacher will know that that student has something to say uh, so that you can invite them into your lesson uh, to, or to come onto microphone to ask that question. So that's all we've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this video. If you did, please do give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps me out uh, and I'll be able to bring you more interesting videos like this. You might want to check out some of these other great videos on ideas for using Microsoft Teams and Office 365 for remote learning. Stay safe, keep your hands clean, and I'll see you on the next video.